So in this video, I'm going to go check out a piece of land that I'm interested in. It's an off-grid property in an unorganized township. I've been toying with the idea of buying some land like that, like acreage land in the forest for a while. I really miss being able to just go somewhere to camp. I mean, I can kind of go rent space somewhere. I can, you know, like provincial park, that kind of thing. But I, I want my own space that I can go camp at any time I want. And in the future, I would like to actually live off-grid. The problem is with the cost of living going up every year, it's just not sustainable to live in the city anymore. You go to work, you get paid, and then you pay all your bills, and then there's nothing left over. And it's just, it's a cycle that just keeps on going. And I've been living alone now in my own house for about 10 years, and I'm not any more ahead than I was 10 years ago. Like, I don't have extra money, I don't have savings, I don't have anything, because everything just goes towards paying bills. And city taxes, especially city taxes, city taxes go up every single year. Just my water charge alone, is $100 per month now. $100 for water. It's just, it's nuts. So, in the future, I want to live off grid. That way, I can eliminate most of those bills because I can have a well and a septic, which, yeah, I know I might have to do maintenance here and there, but it's, there's no ongoing cost. It's just, you know, one time cost. You know, if something goes wrong, I might have to pay somebody to, or I might have to rent equipment to dig it up or whatever. So, those are one time costs. It's not like a monthly charge. You know what I mean? And for hydro, well, I'm going to have solar, so that's going to be free. And I might get a propane generator as a backup or whatever, but ideally I want to go full off-grid and not rely on outside services. The other thing is everything is just getting more expensive. Everything's going to crap in the world. Honestly, I think the economy is going to crash within the next 10, 15 years. Like, I'm not an economist, so I could be way out wrong here. I'm not basing this off anything specific, but it's my personal guess. I think the economy will crash eventually, and it's coming. I think it'll be a pretty big crash. Because it it's a race at the bottom. You have the big companies that are they're always sucking more and more money. It's a capitalist way of thinking. You want to try to make as much profit as possible. So what can we cut this year? We need to make more profit. Well, there's an end to that. Eventually, you just won't be able to do that anymore. It's just gonna, everything's going to crash. And people are making the same amount of money, but yet every cost of living keeps going up. Something's going to give. So I don't want to be around relying on the system when that happens. I want to be living off-grid. Or at the very least, I want a property where I can just go to. I can sell my house and just go live there. Now, the issue is I do have a really good job, so I don't want to quit my job. And if I go and buy land, you know, an hour and a half from here, well, I can't really live there and have a job at the same time. So I'll compromise. So I, if I buy this land, it'll be to camp and it'll just be a campground. I mean, it'll be like owning a cottage or whatever. So at first, I'm just going to use it as a camping spot and a cool hideout and eventually grow from there. And if I get to a point where I can actually live there year round, then I just need to try to figure out some kind of source of income. I mean, YouTube's not gonna cut it, that's too unstable. But if I can find something, it doesn't have to be much, it can be some kind of remote job or something, or maybe web hosting, you know, like if I rent a server and host a couple of websites on it, VPSs, it doesn't have to be much, I just need to find a little bit of income and that'll supply money for the small cost that I will have living off grid. Because in an unorganized township, you're still paying taxes, but it's not as much. It's like 100, maybe 200 bucks a year. Now this property is over 100 acres, so it might be a little bit more, but still, I'm paying like 400 and something dollars per month here in the city. It's just, it's nuts. And I'm not living in an expensive city. I'm not in Toronto or something where the cost of living is even crazier. I'm in a place where it's generally cheap, but it's still expensive. Especially for the money I make, like I should have more money to myself and I don't. Now I have a lot of hobbies I'd like to get into at some point. I'd like to get into maybe working on cars or just building stuff. Oh, and it looks like uh, they're about to deploy some satellites. I'm just watching the feed for SpaceX here. I would turn on the volume, but it's probably a copyright thing. You know, I'll get hit. Actually, let's see here. Oh no, they're not quite ready to deploy yet. Okay, so I'm good to go. But anyway, so yeah, so in the future, I would like to live off grid. You know, maybe like 10 years from now, like. I can't jump the gun, I still have, there would be a lot of work to do on the property and everything costs money. So anyway, so long story short, in this video I'm just going to show you some of the footage of that property. I'll bring my drone and stuff and, and go, I'll put the GoPro on the dash so I can kind of do a little time lapse of the traveling there. You're going to see the footage right about now, so enjoy! Let's get going. So the whole way was a pretty good drive in good road conditions. 
Now, the downside of highways here though is that they put so much salt and it gets all over your windshield and in the wheel wells and basically all over your vehicle. And it's really hard on the vehicle. I actually ran out of washer fluid early on, so I had to pull over once in a while to put snow on the windshield just to try to keep it clean. Eventually made it to a gas station to get more fluid and gas up while I was there. These trucks sure don't sip on gas. It was like 99 bucks to not even fill the tank. It was like maybe halfway. I didn't leave with a full tank, mind you. Now I wish electric trucks were more common because I really want to go electric, but there's just not any options like on the market. And especially used because I can't justify buying new, it's just too expensive. But even on the new market, there's not much, so it's kind of too bad because I really want electric truck, it would be pretty cool. I mean, the Cybertruck looks cool, but I just can't justify that cost. It's like, it's crazy. By the time you consider exchange rate and the taxes and all that, it's like, if they guarantee that it's gonna last like my lifetime, maybe, but other than that, I just can't justify it. So the access road to the property is really nice. In fact, I saw a snowplow, so they maintain it regularly, so that's good. I saw a lot of logging trucks, so there's probably some active logging going on in the area. So there's always a chance that they stop maintaining the road, but we'll see what happens. It's got the drone in the air to scout the area. Now it's kind of hard to tell where the boundaries are, but the property is almost one kilometer long, and about maybe 100 meters or so wide. I want to keep the drone close to play things safe. I believe there's a pond or swamp right, right where we see the pines in the group on the top left corner. But that could potentially be transformed into a small lake or something. Hard to really tell in winter, but the trees look decently mature. Mostly birch and poplar, and it's not too dense, making it easier to walk through. It looks like I would have a farm as a neighbor. Hopefully they don't use pesticides or anything like that, but it looks like it's just livestock, so I should be okay. The problem with pesticides is that it can leach into the ground and then that can affect the well, but I'm not too worried. At this point, I'm pretty sure I'm seeing beyond where the property ends, but all the land after that is crown land, so it's essentially free land to explore. On the right is two small camps uh, that are already set up and supposedly there's even a well that's already there so as is I'd have a place to sleep and spend the night which is great. And there goes a the logging truck. It's actually doing pretty good speed there. Pretty sure there's a stop sign there. And then another view of that camp. It's basically a camper with a roof that they built over it and making it safer from the elements. So that's pretty good. On the right, there's a few other openings on the property. So I could potentially build some cabins there to rent out if I really want to. It could potentially be a source of income if I get regular guests. As far as I can tell, everything you see up to that line of snow on the horizon is pretty much my property. Maybe even further, but it's hard to tell. Lots of land to play on, that's for sure. And it looks like another road on the left, but I don't think that's actually a road. It's probably like a small creek or something, but I think that's around the edge of the property. I'm not positive though. And I guess a last quick look around before I get ready to land.
At this point, I'm getting ready to drive back home. Kind of speed through that since I was having trouble keeping the windshield clean because of how dirty the highway was. Sometimes I wish it would keep a good snowpack instead of putting so much salt because it'd be less hard on vehicles. But all in all, this property is promising. So I still want to give myself time to see if I really want to buy it because it is a pretty big investment and I would be dipping into credit. So something better might pop up. But I really like the idea of buying land like this and I mean a hundred and something acres, that, that's a lot of land to play on. So either way, this made for a pretty fun adventure. So this is it for this video and thanks for watching.